Welcome back to your Living Your Design for Projectors Success Secrets. Today, the main place that I'm going to spend a lot of time on is our projector generator interaction. And the reason for that is because that's most of the planet. And that's who we're here for. If you look at the auric frequencies, reflector, resistance sampling, they have their own Teflon aura that protects them. Manifester, it's, it's repelling and it has an impact and it has this like shell that protects them from having our kind of interaction. So they have their own thing going on over there. Projector and generator, guide and doer, the, the person that um, waits and watches and is aware, and the person that actually does with their own energy. So as a projector, we have to wait to be invited into the generator's aura because it can feel very invasive and painful to them. Literally painful to them if we're trying to penetrate and they're not ready. Now I want you to think about a projector mom and a generator child, open G, very open design, one generator channel. I can't remember exactly what her channel was, but she was a fellow professional that I met uh, here in Sedona about a month and a half ago. And she was raised by a projector mother. And she said it literally did it, a projector mother and father. It hurt to be so penetrated by them when she was just busy doing her own thing. And now they want her to do something different and they're telling her what to do. It literally hurt in her chest. So because our aura probes and penetrates and the generator has no protection from us, we need to be very careful that we don't try to probe without asking. Our aura just does it. It does its own communication. We call it the, the auras do the talking. The auras are always talking to each other. That's the energetic influence. So if that generator hasn't opened up and asked for your guidance, it's like a clam that slams shut and it is not open to your influence or your friendship or your guidance or your anything if it's slammed shut. So it's a waste of energy. Both of you get bitter and resentful and frustrated because you're, con you're conditioning each other. Okay, so um, what I have on these slides is something that I've added, this piece, I've added to these slides from the basic slides that you get from the Living Your Design um, class. And these slides are there inspired by my class with Darsha, um, Dar Darman and Leela, who teach the child development analyst certification class. And what you see on this is who goes first in white and who returns in yellow. So the manifester always goes first with the projector. Always. Never initiate with the manifester. You already have a manifester in your life? Let them initiate you. Let them come to you. Don't initiate some new course of action with the manifestor. If they want something from you, they will let you know. Now, generator, you can see, they still go first. And the reason for that is they're both energy types. The energy types are the doers. We are waiting for their, as a reflector, initiation from the rest of us. As a projector, we're waiting for them to initiate, recognize, invite us so that we don't, because we don't have the energy to go, 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 do, 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 make things happen. We need to have our correct interaction be recognized from the other first. Our mind cannot recognize who is right for us. Only the mechanics will guide us in the right direction. And this might be really hard in the beginning, but if you can try it one day at a time, one week at a time, maybe one month at a time, and just see what happens. Now you're going to find that your human environment shifts. All projectors are here to master their human environment. If you stop initiating with the people that are not right for you, for whatever mind-based reason you think you have, and you just allow the right people to come to you, you'll find that your, your pattern shifting, your people shift. And if you're honoring your own authority and discerning about your motivation, now you can clearly see right in that moment. This person, hi, I'm a human or a hope motivated person. This person is trying to guilt me into interacting with them and taking care of them. Boy, do I know to step back now. It took years though of having interactions where I could see the pattern. And sometimes there was, there was no choice. I had to be in that interaction to really learn something truly about my 
relationship with that person. So don't judge yourself if you can't pull out of the relationship. Don't judge yourself. Just watch it and let it uh, be observed. You know, observing the passenger, your witness consciousness of what's happening in this interaction. Let's dive into projector success secrets for our type. Now we're looking at our process in interaction with the other persons, particularly the generators in our lives. So we know that our success depends on their recognition first. They have to go first. If it's not a projector type, they need to make the first new move. Now, if it's projector, projector, that can be a mutual uh, recognition. And oftentimes it might dance back and forth if you become emotional together or if you already are emotional or if you're a mental projector and your process takes time, that recognition will dance back and forth, will take some time to process. Your recognition and alignment with the right people is inherent to your authority making a decision that works for you and them. It's a recognition that goes both ways. So you have to wait for them to invite you first. And what we are here for, again, remember short uh, encounters, especially short periods of time, because we're here to advise and guide them in their work. We can maximize energy and resources as an undefined sacral with our observational perspective of what our channels are bringing to the table of how we see and experience the world, how we're here to guide them to success. So we need to be a leader in terms of having a chain of command, not in a group. Group is where things start to fall apart, particularly large groups, unless you're someone like Rachel and you have the activation that is about the large group. So in, in large groups, she does have a role, but that's the only projector channel that does. In small groups, these channels right here have a role, and those are the only projector channels that do. Everything else, we need to make sure that you have a chain of command, like Barack Obama. Barack Obama had gate 33, uh, in line six as well. In one of his, um, that's part of the cross of refinement. And so it was one of his, I can't remember if it's son or earth, I'm pretty sure it was son, but he led through a chain of command. You can also be a systems consultant because all of us who are projectors are very good at mastering systems to tie in the big pieces. Uh, a mental projector I know says it's a 10,000 foot view. You really get a great perspective on everything. So you can be somebody who connects people as a networker. You could be a mediator, basic split definition, seeing two sides of the perspective. You could be a teacher. All projectors can be some kind of teacher once they master a system. You could be a coach, a one-on-one -on -one coach or a consultant. Because you are here to guide the process along, to keep, it's the link between everybody that is doing their part. We're the link that's seeing where people need to do stuff. Kind of like, you know how that um, person on the street that is directing traffic when the lights go out, when the lights don't work, you see where people need to go and you direct them. Now that only has to come through correct recognition and invitation because you start directing people without them asking, boy, you get kicked to the curb. We've all had that experience, yeah? Who are you to say blah, 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 whatever it is. Um, our interaction with each other uh, is definitely, we have this aura that's open, it's absorbing and penetrating. It has this being open to the other person's invitation. Invitation is a, um, a recognition of mutual exchange of energy, availability for an exchange of energy. So we have this gift of recognizing the potential of others through whatever it is our channel is. And we have a natural inherent gift of being recognized by the right others. That recognition doesn't work if you're attempting to be your not self, to push the energy and you're not living in alignment. You're living out of alignment, your frequency's all off. The energy exchange won't work in the same way because now we're codependent and now we're needy and now we're whatever it is that your not self will be. Hi, my not self controlling, really controlling and really afraid and really trying to do everything for that other person so they won't abandon me. You do all of that junk, whatever your not self tendencies are, try to do everything yourself, don't know how to delegate, 
shiny object syndrome. You do that and you're using your energy incorrectly out of alignment and you're feeling bitter because your channels will show up bitter and then you don't get the recognition that you know you deserve. So getting into this experience takes some time to let go of the old patterns. The memory is locked into your cells. That's why it takes so long to get rid of the conditioning. So doing everything you can to reflect and go inwards to be aware of your negative belief systems and patterns that are holding you back from living your true potential, whatever your highest potential for yourself is, your strengths, your superpowers in the body graph. Um, I see a chat, let me check. Chain of command being a supervisor or manager. Yes, oftentimes supervisor, manager, somebody who's telling other people rather than speaking to a group, but actually one person at a time, having that person do that thing, that person do that thing, you know, having them in, in a, a business environment, having your own office where the people know to approach you when they need something, one person at a time, not this big, you know, um, what do you call those bullpens where you have everybody working in one giant room and they're all in, up in each other's aura, can't do that as a projector and maintain your own health and sanity. Because now you're so deeply conditioned by everybody moving through you, it's like you're being squashed. Your, your life force can't operate in alignment when you're in a group of people, particularly that are all not right for you. And we can only focus one person at a time, really deeply, truly. That's the way our aura works. We can't take in the whole group. So we have our success secrets being first master a system. Oftentimes it's something that helps you evaluate who other people are and what their place is in the world, how their psychology works. So you see tons of projectors in the helping professions of therapists and coaches and um, you know, people who are there to psychologists who are there to help other people understand themselves. So we need to wait for our recognition of our gifts, skills, talents, and way of seeing things. Rather than going to the body graph and saying, oh, um, I got a BG5 reading and it says I should do PR, so I'm going to go to PR school and do PR. Nobody invited me to go to PR school. <laughs> but actually having, okay, what is life inviting from me? If it were up to me, I would not be in the BG5 Business Institute. But I keep getting invited back in there. My mind wanted to go into all of the other esoteric stuff, and I did get invited to that, but there's a lot more energy over there because that's where the money is, so they keep pulling me back. So you've got to wait for physically somebody to invite you and then for everything to light up so that you can do whatever it is that they're inviting you to do. And it's not the doing, it's not in the doing necessarily, but it's in the um, observation of the process and guiding them and their work, being there for them when they need you when they recognize, invite you, when it's right for you, discerning that that is the right other person to work with, that they really honor you for you and they're not trying to make you into something that you're not. And in our success, our awareness of how we can be successful with others is bring them to their success because that's what they're looking for in interaction with you. You're putting your channels in there that's designed to help make them successful. So guiding them to their authority is another way that we can become successful. Because who doesn't love somebody who empowers you? you? You love people who empower you and help you lift you up to stand on their own two feet. Not the people who are disempowering and telling you what to do and you have to and you must and you should do it this way. No, it's finding their own authority, their own truth. That's what will help get us where we need to go. Now, it's not about initiating that with them. It's just in that present moment, that one person at a time, whoever's in your life that is asking you, recognizing, inviting you, that wants to spend time with you, are they right for you? Discern with your awareness, your authority and your motivation. And delegate, learn to delegate. For the last four years, I have had three assistants that will do different tasks for me because I know I can't do it alone. We can't do it alone. But here's the myth of the homogenized world because most of the planet is, transit just now, most of the planet is doing this, this dance and thinking, I have to do it all by myself. I have to do it my way. I have to do it all alone. Otherwise, I'm not good enough. Because over there, they're all doing it alone and you don't see behind the scenes. You don't really know what's going on with that person. So 
learning how to ask questions in right timing of the right other, that is a, a subtlety of our recognition capacity. Instead of, you know, just being a questions, fire off all these questions, that's not healthy for us. We, we don't have the energy to do, like as, as an example, you remember that um, questionnaire that I gave you for the sacral sessions, sacral sessions for people? That is so exhausting if you were to do that day in and day out. I can just answer all these questions. That, that's not us. You know, we need to have the right question in the right time and it answers itself. And it's not you trying to direct them to where you think they should go. It's you helping them see where they themselves recognize that they need to go. Big difference. And I added this piece of take care of yourself like a pro athlete in that we can't take our health for granted. We can't push ourselves in the way that everybody else can. So we need to make sure that we honor our self-care. Self-care is everything for a non-sacral, particularly a projector, especially our energy projectors. And that's what we're gonna go into, the types of projectors, so that you recognize how you're here to be successful. Again, each of us, one person at a time, is the ultimate success. And then some of us have roles in small groups or in large groups for short, short, short periods of time. Your types of projectors, we know we have our mentals, we have our classics, and we have our energy. Where we get confused as far as types of projectors is people going, oh, a splenic. So that, what does that mean? Well, splenic is classic, unless it's connected up to energy, like this one is. Okay, so splenic and G are classic projectors because they have no motors defined. And then our energy projectors are any one of the ego, solar plexus, and root center defined. And then we have our mentals, any definition above the throat, throat and above, any combination. Now they're very, 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 very different from each other. Even though we're all projectors, so we all have that penetrating aura, energy projectors are here to guide productive processes because they have the energy to handle doing that interaction with, the, with people, depending on what their channels are that create the energy and the design. The challenge is there's going to be invitations from others who want our energy. And then we get sucked into the super slave, go, 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 do, 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 because they see we can get stuff done with that energy. But it's not to do that 24 seven. It's not to do that even five days, 40 hours a week. It's to do that in short periods of time and make sure that we rest because we have a pressure inside of us to release this built up energy, we can channel that energy into trying to super slave away or trying to be something that we're not. So our solution is recognize where our true power is, your personal process of authority, your channels are going to give you your true superpower, how you're here to be yourself. And you need to discharge that energy properly through strategy and authority. And by this time, I, I'm hoping that you guys all know how you discharge your energy as an energy type. Classic projectors, superpower, they have a deep wisdom about energy because they magnify the energy of others. The challenge is the decisions will connect them to others with energy. And so that can either empower or enslave them. It can empower them. It can help them move things along or it can make them to feel dependent on the other person for energy. So the solution is it's super critical for these types, splenic and G projectors, to accept correct invitations. Because, oh boy, when you get sucked into energy and then it's hard to get out of the relationship or get out of the situation because now you're dependent on them for that energy. So be very objective and selective with their invitations for our classics more rare. Mostly we have a lot of energy projectors. Okay. And then we have, of course, they need to follow their authority. However, that process works for them. Our mentals. Mental superpower is that their systems, systems masters. They have a mental certainty. They have research capacity, capability and capacity, and they can really have an immense wisdom about the whole body itself. You find a lot of uh, what I notice, talk therapists, healers, as mental projectors, people who really, um, I like to call them the projector's projector because they really see, see big, big picture view. The challenge is because they have an undefined G always, 
the correct environment is critical to their well-being. If they're not in the right place, nothing goes right for them. So the solution is they need to go into their authority. Balance your mental process off other people to hear yourself talk. That's the solution. We could subdivide all of these three types into authority. And those are different types of projectors. Ross said that the projector type is the most complex. It, we are the evolution where we've only been around on this planet since 1781 as a type, as an auric frequency, as a being. Our role is being supported by the background frequency of the cross of planning. Cross of planning is about the creation of communal support structures that educate the tribe. The most important thing for a projector is to be educated. That education, that awareness, that the intelligence, there's so much intelligence about other people. That education has everything to do with their success. I try to make sure I always work with the projectors who are really showing that they're dedicated and that they're committed to this process because oftentimes you find so many homeless, especially mentals, homeless and unemployed projectors because they didn't get the opportunities for the education. And they are burning themselves out trying to be like everybody else out there on the physical material plane and then getting sick so we are at a disadvantage in that it's not, the world isn't necessarily aware of how we operate, just like they don't know how reflectors operate because those people are so rare. We're so new, but we do have at least education. That's our blessing and gift that we can take in large amounts of information and that it's everywhere on the internet now, free. Anything you want to know, you can learn. When we wait for our recognition and invitation, just to remember what this is like to allow things to just happen and flow, you just be aware, be present, be available. If it's right for you, if it's correct for you, and just actively wait. What does active waiting mean? It doesn't mean you're just sitting there doing nothing. For me, as a projector that has this kind of environment, left arrows, I have to be busy. I have to do things. I have to move my body. So this is about waiting for an invitation to interact with other people. And so you don't initiate interaction with other people unless they're a projector or a reflector and your, you know, your authority has been activated. So waiting for opportunities to come to you does not mean sitting still. It means not initiating with others. And you'll know when the opportunity is right, when the person is right, when everything lights up inside of you and you hear the keynotes, now that you know design, of your design being recognized. Oh my God, Lavina, you're so inspiring. Oh, you have such focused energy and you're so um, able to describe things for us in a visual way, imagination, that's very visual. Um, somebody recognizes your skills, talents, abilities, and in general, seeing the big picture, leading or guiding the process, not as in I'm telling you what to do, but as in being a, an integral part of moving that process along successfully. And then they literally, physically, um, to be dramatic, Raw would say, down on bended knee. It's a formal invitation that works best for you. So they invite you in and they say, hey, would you like to help me with this group, job, project, business, endeavor, partnership, whatever it is that involves you in your time, your precious, limited, valuable time, with an other. We need to respect our own process first, otherwise nobody else is going to respect us. You will know when an opportunity is right for you if you honor your authority. The authority will light up and everything inside of you will feel that lightness of seeing and being that feels successful. That's our process. It's a two-way street, recognition, invitation. If it's a generator over there, we need to ask them back. Who are you, you know, going into the, not who are you literally, but as in, if the generator makes a statement or asks a question or invites you in, you reframe that question back at them. Is this the direction that you would like to go? Because they're just spouting ideas, sharing their process, and they don't know which way to go, especially if they're undefined G. So you ask them, wherever you feel the movement, wherever you recognize the movement of their energy, you ask them a laser pointed question, 
is this right for you to do right now? And then you get an uh-huh or uh-uh. And so no response means it's an uh-uh. You can feel their energy or lack thereof in your body because you're taking them in very deeply. We are designed to be conditioned. So our not self theme, if we are projecting into another person out of integrity and alignment, it's not a correct interaction, we won't feel seen, appreciated, or credited for our work. So it's a waste of time and energy to try and project into somebody that is not asking you because then we'll get rejection and then we'll feel sour. That's what bitterness, like your face screws up and you get so bitter and resentful, it doesn't taste good in the mouth. There's no sweetness and lightness to life. It's all heavy and it's boundary invasion. When we need, you are projecting yourself into an other that's not asking, that's us boundary invasion. We might feel like it's the other way around, but it's our problem, problem because we never learned this as children, that we have this ability and that it can feel painful. It's a physical sensation in the body. When you're eating somebody, boundary invasion, penetrating into the other, you're literally eating their energy, digesting, utilizing their energy, using their fuel, and it can be a physical sensation in the body of distaste, distaste, stream of taste, discomfort, sourness, bitterness, anything that's like a body sensation of ick. It could be a smell that you really don't like. It could be like you're, you don't like the sound of their voice even. When somebody walks into a conversation between the two of you and that the other person's energy gets pulled to them, not to you, don't take that as a, a rejection of sourness and bitterness. That's your own energy that's not appropriate for that person or that conversation. And what will happen is be, when we start to turn on to our success, there may be jealousy from other people because they don't understand why does she get all the opportunities? Why do they? Because we are here to be successful. And so that success, when we start to have our shooting star, our rising star, and people start to get jealous and start to slander or backbite or you know, bad mouth you, it's just part of the process well, from people who are not awake or aware awake and aware to the unity of oneness that we are all one totality, but we have our different parts to play, our different perspectives because we're all individuating in this time and this now. So that's our process of the not self. Now you might be jealous of others before you really get into the awakeness and awareness of unity consciousness and not having the, the boundaries of thinking that everything needs to be for you in order for you to, to have security and safety. That was me before human design took root. Very jealous and very bitter and very like gra grasping and greedy. The mind, the not self mind, because afraid of survival, not being able to survive. So having to pile up money in the bank in order to feel safe, rather than trusting that life will bring what is needed that your life is perfectly financed when you let go of trying to make yourself into something you're not and you just honor your own authority. Your life is perfectly financed for what you need in this life. So letting go of that jealousy, ooh, such a big one. That is what I wanted to share with you for a projector. So as a recap, I'm gonna go back to this slide here. We know we have to wait for recognition invitation or not self theme is bitterness. Mechanics always non-sacral throat not connected to a motor because that would be a manifester. Our aura is focused and absorbing. Who are you? Will I be noticed? The signature and goal is success. And actually I should change this up here because um, when, I, when I went to talk about it, one person at a time here, open to invitation. Because technically um, sacral beings are open and enveloping, so I don't wanna confuse anybody. So remember, with the interaction, never initiate with a manifester. Keep them informed if you already have a relationship with them of something that impacts them. With the generator, let them invite, recognize you first, especially if you have an undefined throat, practice not saying anything and just waiting for right timing for the energy to move, to speak, to ask the question. And biggest thing that you can do with these guys is start your sentence off with can or could if you want something. 
if you're requesting something, okay? If that's something that you recognize will help them find their own satisfaction, not for your own self-centered, self selfish interests. Be very clear about where it's coming from, the integrity of the energy and the interaction, because you're here to help them be successful. We're not here to use them to our success. Big difference. And then we have some mutual respect is the thing that we need to learn between projectors and generators. So that we can be our own authority. And we are here to have successful everything. Success is the color of our spirit. So we have successful relationships, love, lifestyle, income, purpose, all across the board. That's why it can get so sticky from other people. Because when we get to the secret of how to master our human environment, what does every great leader say? They put the smartest people around them or they work with people who have strengths that match their strengths. You know, this balance of talents and gifts and working together. So projectors are here to have three to five correct people in their life. And that is everything to a projector. So that's why in the next class that we're going to do, I'm going to invite you to bring your three to five people. So everybody clear on that? Any questions on that? So you want people physically in your life. Now, if you have a ex lover that's not in your life anymore and you really would like to have some closure or understanding of what happened, that's fine too. Um, but ideally first pick the people in your life now that you can observe, that you interact with. If you don't have that, you wanna go into family, your mother or father or your child, you know, other children, siblings if that's something that's really important to you to understand about their chart as we go into circuitry for the next class. I invite you to continue the journey in your strategy and authority. And the exit in seven years isn't gonna be anything like you ever imagined. It's gonna be something totally unique to you. I can't even describe it to you. The mind's process, we can describe perfectly. All of the not self stuff, all of the stuff that you know now to look out for and that you don't have to trust that that you can take your strategy and authority and exit somewhere unique to you.